Hey everybody, this is Dal Stone here doing a, another Tiling Texture Rock Gravel Part 5. I know this has been on hiatus uh, for quite some time, but um, <clears throat> it was essentially I was just looking at the videos and um, until I finished the project, um, I wasn't happy with continuing to kind of doing the series until I finished it. I, I gone through the process and I've written down a script and I knew what I was going to say etc etc so I wanted to kind of get it done before I um, did another video for you guys so uh, first and foremost let me just kind of take this logo out of here and these are just kind of some quick renders that I did um, for the asset so this is a uh, the final renders that I have on my art station that I have on art station website, whatever you want to call it, uh, which you guys can check out www.dallastone.com or um, just go on to my YouTube channel. Uh, there should be an art station button in my banner, and I'll probably just make a link or something like that in the in the video in the. Ah, in the description sorry guys it's been a really long time since I've done a YouTube video but all right let's just go right to it this video I'm gonna teach kind of show you guys the process that I took to create this uh, this final texture right um, a lot of people uh, trust me guys I read the comments right and there's a lot of kind of hate kind of not hate maybe maybe it hates a strong word maybe there's a lot of dislikes on the process that I was kind of using um, maybe there's a lot of new viewers to my channel who don't realize that uh, I do a lot of just videos of me just working, right? And um, on my first video, I admitted that I am learning, right? I am learning, and but it, I just felt like um, maybe people didn't get that message or maybe people didn't care for it. People just wanted to kind of, hey man, stop learning. You should already know this program. You should be teaching us, right? So, um, so I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe they have some sort of, maybe they're right, you know, maybe a lot of the commenters are, are correct and maybe I need to focus more on that. So regardless, sorry, that was just a little side note there. Um, so the first thing that you always do before you start a project is you gather reference. So um, for me right away, I went to CG Textures or Textures.com now, I believe. And I gathered some references. Where's my rock? Uh, da, 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 da. Rock gravels are one and reference. And this was the reference right away, right? This is the you guys will see that this is the, also the it was the thumbnail for part one, uh, one to four. Um, and I think for consistency's sake, I'm going to keep it as the thumbnail. Um, this was the goal, right? This is what I wanted to to be able to create um, was a tiling texture with this kind of um with these type of rocks and the rock pebbles and having the shapes right and um this is kind of like a rock that you'd find in like a north american uh house property for their like driveway right um or at least that's what a lot of vancouver uh, british columbia canada homes um if you look at uh East side Vancouver there's a lot of this type of rock pebbles inside the driveway so that's the first thing that you do regardless of what project you're working on in 3d right is you gather you gather references usually but for me my goal was to try and duplicate and create that reference okay so second thing that you normally do with substance designer is you create uh, a height map right uh, procedurally in substance right so that's what I tried doing here so I tried going into here, I tried creating all these rock shapes, putting into tile generators, and I'll be honest with you, like I think with the knowledge that I've gained now, I probably could do this step a lot better. I still tried really hard, and I, I mean, you guys can watch the videos, um, part one to four, and I tried this method, and I just it just wasn't clicking, it just wasn't working. And like I said, maybe in the future I'll come back and I'll do like a like a rock gravel two or something like that, and try it out procedurally again. Um, like I said, with a lot of the knowledge that I have now, uh, with a lot of the knowledge that I have from my coworkers, um, I might be able to actually create it a lot better this time around. So that being said, okay, um, it didn't work out for me. 
Like I couldn't. I'm new to substance designer, right? I'm learning this right now. And when I was speaking to a lot of substance designer masters at uh, at EA, um, where I work, a lot of them were saying, "Dude, like if you're learning um, to get to that level, it takes a lot of practice." And this comes back to what I was saying about maybe on my YouTube channel, there's not that much room for me to experiment with learning videos, like for me, right? Practice videos for myself. Um, a lot of the value in my YouTube channel is actually on my tutorial videos. And so I was like, okay, okay, you know what? Like maybe this series is not like I'm getting like, you know, good views, right? For my videos. But um, there's a lot of dislikes, right? So I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe the series isn't, isn't where I needed to go. So, so I said, okay, I am going to do this the way that um, other substance designers were saying. If you're learning, this is probably like ease yourself into substance designer, right? So this became step number two, which is modeling rocks in Maya. Okay, so a lot of people that I spoke to said, hey, you know what? Do uh, the method that I've always been doing, right? Which was create the shapes that you want in Maya and then tile it later on, okay? So I'll, I'll explain what, what that means. So I went in here and I created six rock shapes, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of move these around here so you guys can see. Um, and I've, and I've, trust me, I've heard your guys' comments on, hey, stop moving your mouse so quickly, you know, it gets us dizzy. So I'm going to try that a little bit more. Secondly, I've also heard a lot of the comments where you guys were saying, take deep breaths, you know, you don't need to speak so quickly, right? So I'm going to do my best to not, um, to not do that as well. So I'm trying my best to improve on the, on my YouTube videos. Okay. So here we go um so these are all the different rock shapes that i decided i was gonna need to kind of create the tiling texture right these are the rock shapes right and obviously you can spin them you can rotate them you can scale them you can do whatever you want with it but these are going to be the fun the fundamental shapes of uh, of all the rocks that are going to be um that are going to create this texture right so i took all of these rocks okay um, and then I brought them into ZBrush. Okay, so I brought them into ZBrush. Um, okay, so don't worry, this is this is a little bit further out. And what I did was I brought them in to ZBrush. Okay, and I made sculpts. Okay, so the, so this is the high poly sculpt that I did. Uh, this is about twelve thousand triangles. And the reason why I decided to do about 12,000 triangles was because I can, I mean, yeah, I can go and sculpt 100,000 tries for each rock, but you're not going to see that much detail, right? These rocks are, are going to be tiny in this texture. Not tiny, but they're not going to be huge, right? They're, you're not going to, a player isn't going to zoom in to these rocks and look at every little crack, right, that's in there. And something that a lot of uh, substance designer um, artists were telling me was do the macro details, so the big shapes, right um in maya and in zbrush and then do the little micro details in substance designer and this is a good way to kind of learn substance designer is by essentially doing what you normally do in photoshop in substance designer right learn it that way learn it step by step and i think i'm going to create a, another video which is kind of like some tips on how to slowly ease yourself to substance designer because that really kind of changed my perspective on how do I um, how do I move into substance designer as someone who when you look at node based stuff it's really intimidating right okay sorry another tangent um, so rock shape one this is just an example uh, maybe I'll load up another one as well uh, I'll import in maybe rock shape two. This is the low poly here. Um, so this is the low poly. Um, so yeah, so this is obviously you guys are noticing this is a lot higher poly than what was in Maya. Essentially, I just imported into Maya, did a bunch of sculpting, right? I did like trim dynamic and stuff like that. Um, punched out some of the shapes, molded it a little bit more, and then I 
um, put it through the substance, uh, sorry, the, the decimation master uh, at 10%, and then it became 2,400 polys. To be honest, in the future, I think um, I would actually go even less for the low polys. I'd probably go for something in the 500 range for each rock, just for the computing uh, processing later on. It's just a lot quicker when you have less triangles to calculate when you're doing your bakes. So, okay, so hold on here. I just want to make sure that I am on track here. So modeling rocks in Maya, sorry, and then sculpting rocks in ZBrush. So that's kind of what I did. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to like go through this, all that stuff, sculpting and things like that. Maybe in a future episode, maybe I'll go through that. If that's in the comments section, there's a lot of, hey, how did you do your sculpts and rocks and stuff like that in ZBrush. Um, so then the next step after I did all the sculpts in ZBrush, I've decimated them all to a more game-ready uh, uh, poly count. I started tiling the rocks in Maya. So I'm going to open up another scene here. So in Maya, um, I believe it's tiling 02. All right, so... This gets a bit crazy, right? This gets a bit crazy. So, essentially what I did was I had a quadrant of four, right? And I, I'm i not going to go through this this process. Like, um, I do have a video, um, a video on this, how I tiled a roof texture. Uh, and it's literally, I think there's two parts to it. And it, I go through the whole process. Essentially, I had the grid right um let me just hide everything here maybe that will help a little bit more um okay yeah here we go so so what i did at first was i put in i brought in all of the shapes in maya and then i essentially started off with this first so i'm just gonna hide all this so this is what i did first right and i was like all right cool so now this is all good right now i duplicate i believe it's instance i instanced this whole group of pebbles into four different quadrants right and what that does is that it allows me when i do that properly um it allows me to when i move when i select one of these rocks you'll notice that it's selecting see so when i select this purple rock do you see how it's selecting all these it allows me now to focus on anything let me just change this here to this one. Anything that's inside this red texture is what I'm going to end up baking. So I can move this rock, right? So I can go, uh, you know what? Maybe I don't want it here. I'm going to move it down here. And what happens is when I go to the edge here, right? You'll notice that this rock is appearing on the other side. This makes sure that what you're doing is going to tile right so I essentially did that for every single thing um, like I said check out that video if you guys really want another video on how I did this let me know in the comment section I will we'll do another video right now I'm kind of experimenting with my YouTube channel I want to kind of see what it is that you guys want to see uh, what are some useful things that you guys want to know and then I'll create those those videos okay so um, so uh, yeah so comments awesome leave it inside the comments okay so that's essentially what I did until I, I really liked the shape. Secondly, if you guys notice, I started... Um, so once I really liked my shape, right, I went in and I started adding some colors. So you you notice that, you know, I have a hyper shade. I just went in, I just made uh, six different colors. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to create a color ID, a color map, whatever you want to call it in Substance Designer, which will allow me to kind of put color on these to select these individually as mass right as mask right so i can be like okay you know what for this one i want them to have dots i want them to have white dots i want it to have uh yellow corrosion i want it to uh be the i don't know like blue rocks right so uh, that's just that's just the examples that I have there so that's essentially what i did or, or that's essentially why you want to create a color id map so i think after that, so after I finished all that, I went to finally trimmed out the scene, right? Because you don't need 
you're not gonna bake all that, right? What you wanna bake afterwards is, so what I did was I just kind of went and I selected everything, right? And I just deleted everything that I didn't need anymore. And it created my high poly, right? So this is now my high poly mesh that I'm gonna start baking. Um, I probably would have had an even better uh, result, honestly, if I had noticed that there was that many hanging out there. If I had moved this up more, had it hovering like this, if I had done that, but I didn't. So that's my goof. Um, and for future, I should really look at that. Um, I've been trying to do all this project uh, whenever my, my baby was sleeping, and I was probably just super tired. But, and then this is my low poly, right? So this is now ready, right? This is now, this is now tiled, right? It's tiling in, my, in Maya. So it is now time to do my bake, baking in substance, right? So that's step five. <clears throat> um, so, so now I'm doing a lot of that. Let me see here. I need to open up another package. Package four, I believe is the last one. Oh, so yeah. So it's, it's just computing. Uh, I do have a lot of stuff open right now. I, let me just close my ZBrush. Don't think I'll be needing that anymore. Hopefully that helps out with the computing. So here is what we start doing. Now, if you guys notice, I mean, I, um, like I said, I, I spoke to a lot of other quote unquote gurus of some designer at EA, and I just got tons of tips on them. And the first thing they said was, dude, you need to organize your, you need to organize your scene, right? Your scene looks a bit ridiculous and you know it's not it's not clean you know what i mean it's, it's not a clean workflow so that was the first thing that they, that they told me to do so i went in and i started creating all these like boxes and stuff like that to make it a little bit easier to kind of follow so the first thing that i did was i created i actually went in and i baked a bunch of stuff let me just remove this old one here this uh other one and so you're going to notice that in here I have my height map, my normal map, and my color uh, my color map ID, right? Um, and as usual, I always throw in my, my reference, right? As always, my other screen, I always have my reference just to kind of look, make sure that I'm looking at what I'm working on, what, what my goal is, and, and looking at all the little details. So, um, so you guys can kind of see now this versus this. Obviously, I, I won't be able to get it completely the way that the reference images, but that's the best that I can do, right? So right away, I created the color ID. I did I did all the bakes, right? So this is the, the color ID here, um, and I have it plunked in. I, and like I said, guys, I'm not going to go through this completely. Again, if you guys want a video on how I did this in like a step-by-step -step on it, then I'll, I'll go in and I'll, and if there's enough of a want for it, I will do that. Um, so I went in and that created the, right, the, the color, the, the color ID helped me create all this. Um, but the first thing that you always do, right, is creating your height map. You got to figure out how do you make this look like it's bumping out and like making sure that the, the, the normals and everything look right. Um, all your shapes look good, right? So I went in, this is the height map that it created. And now that I saw how bad my, my low poly plane was, it, this height map could have been even better, right? So uh, that's a mistake that I've made. I goofed it. I'm not going to go back and worry about it. Um, maybe in the future, I'll definitely go back and I'll, and I'll redo that. Um, and so, you know, I, I punched in my height map. I created a little height output you know that allowed me to create um ambient collision with a height map allows you to uh, when you have a, a height map you can make an ambient collision map um by plugging it in um with a height map you can is it a height map or is it it is a normal map with a normal map baked out uh i was able to create a curvature map which heavily influences kind of the shadowing and you know, not shadowing but like the shapes a little bit more inside um inside here right so um so there we go 
um, you know, added some like edgeware, right? Just kind of like add some stuff in there. Added some erosion, right? Some erosion on the rocks. Um, then I wanted to add some white spots, so I wanted some rocks to have like the white little spots on it, um, which then creates my color map. And then normal map is the normal map. Uh, the roughness map, I literally like this is this is like the the hackiest thing ever to kind of just get different roughnesses. So I have some, you know, a little bit black here, which means that that rock is a little bit smoother than the others. Maybe, you know, I don't know, got some rain or something on it. But in general, I wanted it to be like relatively rough. Um, and yeah, and then I put an ambient occlusion on there, just kind of get some more of the, the darker areas, uh, give it a little bit more shadow. And yeah, I think that's, and then I added just, you know, general noise, right, to all the rocks, right, kind of give it a little bit of noise. Um, and, I, and I tried to give it uh, so, some rocks bigger noise than others so that it doesn't look exactly the same everywhere. And then I added in the soil, which is at the bottoms and stuff like that. It's like a nice subtle brown little area there. So, yeah, that's essentially the process. Um that that I did I mean obviously uh, I'm not going into full details uh, because I don't know if that's something that you guys want to do um, and then they're just just a rendering so I did throw this into Marmoset right I threw it into Marmoset I mean I can load up Marmoset and do all that stuff but I'll be honest with you, I wasn't really happy with the Marmoset renders um, to, to to be fair um, like like this was uh, is this Marmoset no that's not that's not Marmoset Marmoset was this one Right. Um, I just couldn't get the height detail that I wanted. Um, I couldn't get the lighting that I wanted. Like, I, I, like I didn't want to spend too too much time. Right. Um, I tried to. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I spent like an hour just trying to set everything up, and it just didn't look right. Um, and I just way more preferred the final rendering that I was getting in Substance Designer. So I ended up sticking with my guns, and so I ended up getting, you know. Um, so all I did honestly was I just wanted to render here. I didn't use this uh, environment. I believe I used um, I believe I'm pretty sure I used a different environment. And I just essentially went to my camera and I just um, what was it? And then I just uh, it says use window resolution. I just said false right I want to use nine um, 1920 by 1080 where right? I went in there uh, got my got my environment ready to go I believe I use something like the studio I believe yeah I use just studio because it has like a nice little flat back background it's got like a decent lighting scheme here um, I think the lighting on the left was a little bit too strong so I'd like dim that down um, by adjusting some of these settings um, and then I just went to camera and I just rendered it. Um, and I mean, I, I wanted to use iRay rendering as well, but I honestly like didn't really see too much. Like it took a long time to like render and I was just like, you know what, it's the render looks nice without iRay. So I chose, I chose not to use iRay. And then after all that, I published it onto ArtStation, and yeah, so that's pretty much the process, guys. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, please like the video. If you guys don't like the video, dislike it. Let me know, right? Like, I listen to your guys' comments, and um, and I do take it to heart, and I'm, I'm trying to grow stronger as a YouTuber, and I think that everything that you guys have to say, it's valuable to me, right? Um... Like, like I said, during the video, if you guys have certain areas and certain parts of the workflow that you're like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, how did you do that? And there's enough interest, I will create those videos for you guys. And, um, and yeah, if you guys enjoy all my stuff or enjoy this, enjoy more stuff like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel, watch it, um, support it. And, uh, if I, you know, it's, your guys' support means a lot to me. And, um, the fact that my channel is uh, is growing. It's it's a uh, it's very. Um, you guys know what I'm trying to trying to say. Um, so thank you guys so much, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.